Most people think of mobility and strength training as two separate things that need to be trained differently. And that's not necessarily the case. And today I wanna to show you and help you experience why that is. I genuinely believe and help people every day see that you can train hard and still improve how you feel at the same time. Many people think, oh, if I start lifting heavy or if I start training hard, I'm just going to feel locked up. You just need to be able to pick exercises and execute them in a fairly competent way. Let me give you some examples. We're gonna be using shoulder mobility to help illustrate this point today. Many people who lift have really locked up shoulders with terrible mobility. But I'm gonna show you specific measurements that reflect specific limitations and what you can do to improve them very quickly within a set of a given exercise. Most people that work out hard for a long time have really limited shoulder internal rotation. And this is because shoulder internal rotation reflects how much tightness you have on the front side of your rib cage. It reflects how tight your pecs are. And it also reflects, it reflects how tight your chest and pecs are. So what this means is that these muscles are tight and your rib cage is being pulled down and that's restricting the internal rotation space that your shoulder can access. So we're going to use that as a determinant so we're going to be using that as a test and retest to see how much range of motion that we can restore. Shoulder external rotation is a representation of how much tightness and restriction is on the backside of your rib cage or body. Now we can take shoulder external rotation two separate ways. If you have full shoulder external rotation here, you can also take it down by your side. Either way, we're looking for about 90 degrees. For shoulder external rotation, you need to be able to have your scapula move into a relatively upwardly rotated position and away from the rib cage. But if you have tightness on the backside of your rib cage, that's going to pull your scaps closer together, shove them up against the rib cage and restrict your ability for them to move away. And that is going to restrict your external rotation mobility. And this is also often limited when people have back pain. What we're looking for is about 70 degrees of active internal rotation and 90 degrees of external rotation. If you have really good external rotation up here, then I bet you it's limited when you go down by your side and then you go off like that and you measure how much range of motion that has. You should have 90 degrees there. Most people don't have that. Now, in order to improve shoulder internal rotation, it's important to consider that we need to be in a position where we can get expansion of the front side of our rib cage, meaning that this can open up, but we're also driving internal rotation of the shoulder itself. Things that are more extension dominant, meaning that we have the arm being pulled down by the side, this is flexion, this is extension, and extension of the forearm and elbow itself is really helpful for improving internal rotation because that's what it biases at the humerus or the shoulder bone right here. So we need two components. We need the sternum to be in an upright position so that way we can get expansion and decompression of the tissues here. And we need to drive extension of either the humerus or the forearm here. One of my favorite ways to do this is with a triceps extension exercise. So go ahead and give this a try. Now I'm gonna give you two different ways you can do this because ultimately people will respond differently to different exercises. I'm not there in the weight room with you. I can't coach you through this. So I'm going to give you some things to try to test and retest your shoulder measurements. You might be surprised at which one works better for you because some people will just be able to more easily do one exercise than the other based off of old patterning or whatever feels comfortable for them. We're going to get a cable machine attached at a relatively high setting. So that way the resistance of the cable when we do this triceps extension is perfectly in line with our forearm. So we'll, sh we'll show you what that looks like in a second. We have a handle attachment and we're going to grip it in a pronated fashion, meaning that our palm is going to face away from us. And we never want to have it cranked so hard to where we feel pain in our elbows. So just go to the relative end range of what you're capable of doing. So we're going to get the elbow at about a 45 degree angle relative to the torso here to start. And that way we have that nice straight line from here all the way down through his elbow. Now, Trevor is just going to chill out with the rest of his body, make sure he maintains a stacked position of his head over his rib cage, over his pelvis. So it might help him get a little exhale through his mouth to bring his rib cage down and then take an inhale and then exhale and extend that arm, making sure he's moving through his forearm and his hand and he's not moving his humerus or his arm much whatsoever. It's staying relatively stationary. And then as he exhales and goes down, he's gonna stop 
at the point at which he feels like he's going to have to either crank his wrist in an awkward direction or he's going to overextend his elbow. He just needs to go to the point where it's a pretty straight line from his shoulder all the way down to his wrist. The most common mistake here is that people are going to go too far and they're going to push that shoulder forward and that's going to compromise everything we want from this exercise. So make sure that that shoulder is staying relatively neutral. You don't have to squeeze your shoulder down and back, just keep it hanging out in a nice relaxed position. And as long as your arm stays in that angle right there, everything will be good. So that leads us to the other common mistake is where people are going to end up moving this arm on the way back up and then they're just gonna be using momentum. So keep that humerus in the same position. This is the tape press on an incline bench. What we're gonna do is find a bench and put it on an incline about this much, probably no more than 45 degrees, around 30 to 45 is what you're looking for there. And we're just going to go and lay back on it. And you wanna make sure that you can keep your whole back flat on this bench. If necessary, to keep your whole back flat, you need to put your feet up on some pegs or you need to put up a couple plates on the ground or risers, that's good because we wanna make sure that our rib cage isn't flaring in this position. However, we're still in a position where our back is flat and our sternum remains up. So the two things to look out for here is not to be here, but also not to be too far down here. But if your whole back is flat against the pad, you're gonna be in a good position. So to start, we wanna be in the position where we have the dumbbells straight up at the ceiling palms facing away. And we wanna get some reach, some protraction as we call it of the scapula, but not so much to where our sternum depresses and our head comes off of the bench. And we're going to lower ourselves by bending our elbows and keeping our wrist in line with our forearm as much as we can, getting down to the bottom position. If you can touch your chest very, very lightly, that's great. That'll give you a nice stretch on the triceps and then exhale as you come all the way back up to the starting position right there. Make sure you're inhaling through your nose fully, but not engaging your neck as you do so. And then exhale through your mouth, making sure your back stays on that pad. And then again, the biggest thing other than that to look out for is making sure your wrist stays stacked over your elbow. You're not twisting it in some awkward direction. The common mistake to look out for is losing that protraction and reach as you come down, people tend to squeeze their shoulder blades or have the shoulder blades come really close together. You're, you might get slightly less protraction as you come down, but you, you should have the intention of keeping that reach and that will help you get your triceps more involved. The biggest mistake other than that is that people's elbows are gonna drop down when they start to get tired. So make sure they stay out here relatively at the same line as your shoulder. And honestly, you don't need the most specific exercise selection either. Simply executing a row properly, which honestly the overwhelming majority of people do not, and driving genuine humeral extension should improve your shoulder mobility. And it should be instantaneous because you're genuinely improving the motions needed to access full shoulder internal rotation. If you like this type of approach, I am just now releasing a weight training program called Symmetric Strength. The program is called Symmetric Strength not only because there's an assessment that will help you identify imbalances from side to side and give you a specific program tailored to that, but also because it is symmetrically improving many qualities of fitness, like strength and hypertrophy. You're not sacrificing anything just because you have a program that's designed to help you feel and move better. So it's just out this week. Check it out down below in the description. If the goal is to improve shoulder external rotation, we want to decompress the area on the back side of the rib cage, really open up space for this to be able to have more room to roam. We want space for the scapula to be able to roam on the rib cage, whether that is in upward rotation or downward rotation, whatever the case is, we want space here. And a lot of people don't have that. So their external rotation somewhere is going to be limited. Now bicep curl variations are really good for that. And they really help open up this area and drive external rotation of the humerus. So flexion of the arm is more external rotation. Extension is more internal rotation. So here are two bicep curl variations to try and then retest your shoulder external rotation. This is the hook line cable biceps curl. What we're gonna do is grab 
a rope attachment on a cable machine. We want the height so that way when we curl really quick, it is going to stay in a pretty straight line. Now, we're going to be in this position where we have our feet flat on the floor and our knees in line with our hips. Because the cable is pretty narrow, we're going to be able to maintain that. We don't want the knees flaring out or anything, and we can make sure we're in the right position by feeling a couple of things within our body. The first is that we need to find our inner heel and our first metatarsal head right here, evenly on both sides. That doesn't mean we lose the outside of our foot, that's just where the bias is within our feet. If you're just feeling that nice and firmly but gently on the floor on both sides, we're in a good position. Within our back, we're going to feel our PSIS, our posterior superior iliac spine, evenly on both sides. That's going to make sure our pelvis is in a good position. Just maintain that throughout the set. Jacob is going to feel his elbows sort of slightly gently tucked into his outside ribs right here. And that's going to make sure that he actually moves through his biceps genuinely and fully. He's going to exhale and he's going to curl, maintaining his wrists stacked over his elbows. And he's gonna inhale through his nose fully and lock out those elbows or just shy of a full lockout. And he's just gonna make sure that he maintains that position throughout the set. It's pretty straightforward as long as you're feeling those points of contact within your feet and your pelvis. This is the respiratory preacher curl. The setup for this, we need to get a bench on an inclined setting so that we are in this sort of preacher curl position passively to start. So we have a pretty straight arm here. We're gonna have a straight wrist relative to our forearm. And also what we're gonna do is get in a staggered stance. So the same arm that's curling is going to be the foot that is back. So left foot back, right foot's just about a half step in front, but most of the weight is going to be on the left heel, keeping both feet flat. So what we're gonna do now is initiate this by staying very tall within our torso, but we're going to subtly turn our sternum towards the side we're going to be pulling with, that's the left. So you want the stern to actually face the left arm, but you don't wanna lose any height in your skeleton as you do that. So that would be slouching, we don't want that. As tall as we can get, and then turn it. It doesn't have to face literally all the way over to the left, just as long as it's sort of facing more of the left side of the hemisphere of your body, you're gonna be in a good position. So in this position here, he's gonna feel maybe a very subtle stretch between his left shoulder blade and his spine, right in between there. If he does, that's good. Shouldn't be extreme, just that subtle turn of the sternum while staying tall should allow you to get that. Now what we'll do is keep our weight on our left heel and then just inhale curl up, keeping that straight wrist. Exhale down. Inhale through the nose up. Exhale down. Great. The most common mistake here is people create too big of a turn either with their head or they do it so much to their torso that they end up kind of like slouching and shrugging into their head there. We don't want that to happen. Keep your shoulder out of your ear. Stay tall, get a little bit of a turn. So you are gonna have a little bit of that rib cage retraction. And if you're not feeling the stretch in between your shoulder blade and spine, again, it's super minor, maybe just three out of 10. Think about reaching your elbow that way, like you're protracting your shoulder, but it will still stay on the bench and that should allow you to reach and get that turn that we're looking for there. The last thing to look out for here is arching the low back excessively. And when people start to get tired, that tends to happen. So just make sure that you're keeping your weight on your heel and a subtle tuck. Now this doesn't apply just to the shoulders. We're just using that because it's easy to test and easy for you to feel. This can apply to the hips and the rest of the lower body too. So if you wanna see that video and you enjoyed this content, smash that thumbs up button and leave a comment down below saying you wanna see that video. I'd recommend doing any of the exercises in this video for just two sets of about 10 to 15 reps. You should pick a weight that is not super challenging, but also not too easy. So something in the vicinity of having one to two two good quality reps left in the tank after your set. If you start to push yourself too hard or you go to failure, you're going to probably start to compensate biomechanically and you're gonna to start to twist your spine in awkward directions you might not even be aware of and that's going to throw off your shoulder. So we want to push ourselves, but not totally to failure. And if you wanna to go to failure, that could be a separate video.